focus is one of the very, very important points. Uh, here are a lot of focus options. Uh, Should we demonstrate them? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I think we don't have to mm. uh, demonstrate this. But, but you can also select them uh, in the quick menu. Select, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, that is, uh, uh, later on we will come mm. back to this uh, quick menu. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because uh, you can do some changes with this uh, quick menu. You can, it's, it's, it's not fixed and you can do your own settings as well in the quick menu. Um, but select RF, it's so far it's nice, but uh, normally I hate the, the touch screens, but for selecting out of focus, it's the fastest way, I think. Select RF, everybody of you know what does it mean. Uh, pinpoint is only spot, or that is spot out of focus. Mm -hmm. It's only little. You can uh, you have you have continuous out of focus. You have tracking out of focus. Lentaro, what are you using for your street photography? Is it tracking out no, of focus? No, no, no. I'm switching between the middle select yeah. AF or sometimes auto area with face detection. So if I have my face here, then, you know, it doesn't matter where I point, my face will always be uh, focused on. But usually I use the middle focus point and then recompose. Mm. So. And uh, snap focus, of course. But that is always yeah. um, always on. Yeah, uh, there's a question how to set up back button focusing. I think we are going to get to it later in the menu. But shutter button setting, this is where you would uh, use AL lock instead of AF plus AL lock to deactivate the autofocus on the regular shutter button. So now I can focus using the shutter button, but I have the back back button for focusing. So yeah. you could focus on something and then take your time and the shutter button would only be there for releasing the shutter. Uh, there was a question about um, hyperfocal distance and stuff like that. I don't want to take too much time, but just to show you for people who want to use the menu focus um, this little um, uh, in, uh, distance in the indication here on the left side is very important because you can so for example for us street shooter we like to set it to f2 uh, usually and then go to f11 um, or 6 yeah f11 usually has everything in focus so you see from one meter to infinity Everything is in focus, so you don't need to worry about autofocus anymore. Um, this would be what hyperfocal distance mean, means. So for F11, the hyperfocal distance would be two meters. Um, should we move on with yes, focus? Yes, also another question about uh, coming back to the middle. Uh, if ah, you, yeah. and that I'm sure there, there is, but... It is easy. Just hold the OK button, and then you go back to the ah, middle. The okay button. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, face detection, I think everyone knows what that is. The face the camera uh, detects the face, so you always will be focusing on the face. And you can set it on for any focus setting or just for auto area, because sometimes you want to select your focus, and then face detection could be in the way. Uh, snap focus distance, that is one of your favorite uh, themes, I think, with the camera. Uh, that is very, very simple. Uh, yeah, on the top right corner, we have a distance indication. It says 1.5 meter at the moment. And you can change that real quick. So you have to hold down the macro button. And then at the same time, you use the dial at the front. And that way you can change the distance. So if I move it to the right right now, I can go from 1.5 to 2, 2.5, 5 or infinity or back to one meter. It doesn't matter if I have autofocus activated right now. If I full press the shutter, it will always jump to the pre-focus distance. And that's very useful if you shoot something in the distance and then suddenly you have something in the foreground and that is maybe within one meter. All you need is just to quickly press the shutter and then um, yeah, your focus will be jumping to your to your set distance. Full press snap, it's we should just mention that if you don't have it on, 
uh, it will not be available here uh, on the top right corner because you can deactivate it if you don't want full press snap. But focus speaking, um, I'm using the camera more and more also for architecture, for landscape and as well for, for macro photography. And with this focus peaking, I have a clear view what parts of the pictures are sharp. There is a hard contrast outline and I can always see what is, is sharp. Now you have the hard white lines there. Manual focus uh, uh, magnification, that is that what you have shown just now. Uh, no, what I showed to, was how you yeah, magnify, but, but uh, mag, mag, magnify the screen. Yeah. But if I turn yeah, it on, but it's the same as you have with, with, with uh, yes. Yeah. If I have yeah. menu focus here and I want to focus, it will automatically uh, zoom in. Yeah. So to, to check yeah. if this, the 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 television exactly. Okay. But I have it turned off. Next would be exposure mode. If we continue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have to say just now that uh, this function is also in the top view of the camera, but uh, mm -hmm. you are able to choose the U1 to U3 functions. And for this, it's important um, to, to select it here because you can save it on a menu function and can choose it every time in between. So this is a setup you need later on for the user setting on the top of the camera. Yeah. What are you using the most of the time? Ah, that is difficult. Uh, I Depends. have different, uh, different setups because uh, as I explained, uh, I'm doing uh, landscape, I'm doing street photography. For me, it's it's very important to, to uh, select the aperture because this is uh, important to you have to select the, 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 the depth of field, but uh, yeah, well, I think mostly manual. Okay, yeah, I switch between auto ISO and the rest manual, or recently I started using shutter yeah. priority. Yeah, yeah, because I auto ISO is, is very, very important, yes, mm -hmm. but sometimes also P mode. Yeah, it's no shame in using the P mode sometimes. Yeah. Uh, if you are on, on an event, only mm -hmm. some pictures. Or you give someone your camera and yeah, they don't uh, know how to use it. Yeah. Okay, we have metering. So multi-segment, center weighted, spot and highlight weighted. Um, yeah. Most so, people know the first three. So multi-segment means it scans the whole frame, right? And decides yeah. what makes the most sense in terms of exposure. I'm a friend of using center weighted uh, metering because it's very, very simple reason. Yeah. Uh, your main subject is in the middle of the in the middle of the, the, the picture. Yeah. And or if you do uh, focusing and then recomposing. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, in yeah. Macro yeah mode. Okay. But but there where my main subject is, mm. I need the correct light light. And so uh, that is the reason I am using center light. Uh, maybe we should quickly describe highlight weighted because this is um, not a unique feature. There are other cameras doing that. But not many, and that would be that the camera always meters for the highlights, so you never get a blown highlight. That could be useful if if you're looking to photograph silhouettes, you want to to completely crush the shadows. That would be a, a useful feature. ISO settings. The camera is able to do also high ISO shots, so uh, especially if we need short exposure times we need mostly also higher value for for iso settings um, you explained that you are using uh, auto iso that makes sense because you set the the aperture you set the uh, exposure time so it makes sense to work with the automatic iso mm -hmm. and here you set the the highest value and the lowest light, uh, value for this uh, for me, it's 200 to 12,800. 12,800, I have enough quality um, and low noise. Camera is not using the, 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 the extreme 
it's depending on the picture. If they don't need the 12,800, they are also using 400 or 800. So mm. I select, select it in this yeah. uh, area. Or you compensate by using the exposure compensation yeah. Yeah. to get yeah. lower ISO. And uh, minimum shutter speed, it's uh, I selected uh, 115 mm -hmm. because of the uh, shake reduction sensor of the camera. Yeah. And 115 could be enough. So that is extreme settings. Yeah. And in between all of this, the camera is working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, flash mode. Uh, But there's no uh, flash. <laughs> there, is, there, there is no flash, uh, Lentaro. So uh, skip this. But. <laughs> If you have a flash on it, you can uh, use exposure compensation. You can use all exposure times as well for flash. That is a real advantage in this camera because you can choose very, very short times or long times. Um, you have to try it by yourself. I do a lot of pictures uh, having unsharp and with a short flash Only the, 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 the important part of the picture is sharp. Play around with it. You can select all of the the, the complete range of of, of, uh, of exposure times could be used as well with flash. Okay. What is program line? I don't think I ever used this. That, that, that better, oh, battery oh, died. Battery, <laughs> battery is empty. Uh, all of us know sports programs, uh, landscapes programs. And that is the replacement of this, or not the replacement, that is the normal name for this. If you need um, faster times, um, you can, here you can select, yes, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, now you have maximum aperture priority, that stands for landscapes photography. If you need a very, very wide range for depth of field, Uh, maximum aperture is if it's open. The camera open. will always try to make the aperture as wide as possible. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Next one. ND filter. ND filter. Um, I'm a friend of long time exposures. And with the ND filter, you reduce the exposure time uh, by the half. So it's it could be helpful in times to have people unsharp or uh, I'm a friend to making unsharp pictures from moving subjects like buses or uh, underground trains like this. Uh, so here it could be helpful to reduce the exposure time. Uh, we talked already about this the, uh, and here it's important to have the uh, RE in the middle of the, uh, if you have a fixed point, spot autofocus, uh, spot RE metering and the uh, autofocus point. Here you have the combination from both of this. You have the light, you have the distance, and that makes a photo for me. That that is a very, very important point. I would like to to set it on or select on Lintaro because you have the light direct as a subject for, uh, you would like to make the photos from. Mm -hmm. So White balance, we don't have to talk about light balance, I think, uh, or white balance. And finally, I use this automatic white balance. Mm -hmm. It's mostly helpful. And, and uh, this is a very professional tool, I think. We, we talk about a prof professional photographer who use the camera under studio circumstances. Here, it's very, very helpful. This is uh, so out of white balance in tungsten lined um, means how, how realistic artificial <laughs> light or warm light will get corrected, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the the temperature the, the color temperature of, of, of tungsten light is different and uh, you can do a very very fine tuning for this here yeah or if you want to shoot uh, a sunset which is naturally think, warm yeah, 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 yeah you wouldn't want to auto auto white balance to correct it so it looks blue yeah. okay still and movie you can and switch between uh, still mode or movie mode here in the menu yeah but you can also set your movie button to be uh, I think to switch on the movie record button so drive mode and that is the same you can uh, select between uh, single frame shooting frame continuous shooting you can choose dry bracketing or uh, that is multi-exposure it's please go back to, mm -hmm. to, to multi-exposure 
uh, you can choose between average and additive or bright mm -hmm. and you can choose uh, if the camera should add picture by picture or should uh, do an average in the metering uh, you can do this here i use this a lot interval shooting so i i'm using very often the the multi-exposure mm -hmm. uh, mode especially for fireworks it makes sense um, because if you have firework, it's only mostly it's only one rocket go, going up or anything like this, uh, special light effect. But if you make a multi exposure and and and, and uh, connect oh, yeah. five or six uh, different uh, uh, light things, it's 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 much more impressive in a firework. The the next one, um, it's the interval shooting. It becomes more and more interesting for for a lot of people to to create a video out of this later mm. on. If you time uh, lapse, yeah, yeah, you can do time lapses. But this is actually for people who want to take uh, self portraits or from group <laughs> photos. This is perfect because not if you set your timer to ten seconds, and you photograph your family, for example. Then you get one shot, and if someone has their eyes closed, you need to do it again. So I use interval shooting to uh, for taking group photos, because then I can okay. set it to you know take a photo every three seconds. And then I just say uh -huh. you know, smile now, and everyone is smiling, and then hold it, or yeah. you get multiple takes without going to yeah. the camera. Okay, well uh, why not? Maybe you can quickly show the self timer. Uh, Ten seconds, two seconds. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the two seconds is for me important uh, for landscape photography. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm using a long, long exposure, exposure yeah. time, uh, I'm, I'm using the two seconds. Uh, yeah. AA filter. filter simulator. Yeah. Anti aliasing filter. Do you know what this is? This is if you. We used to have that um, to correct Moray, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And but without it, the image tends to be sharper. So that's yeah. why it's yeah. removed. Yeah. That's right. So this uh, is a digital solution, right? Yeah, the, the, this mm -hmm. is because therefore uh, the sensor, the shaking sensor, is used. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, with vibration, it makes it a little bit unsharp. Um, the reason for this is uh, with an anti-aliasing filter, uh, pictures are not this sharp as without this. Mm -hmm. Uh, to simulate this, the vibration of the camera, uh, the, the sensor will help. The next step, going to file format. That is one main issue. Uh, now we can discuss this with all of you here in the line. Uh, what is better? It's RAW better? It's JPEG better? I'm doing <laughs> every time RAW and JPEG mm -hmm. for a very, very simple reason. I'm using the camera as black and white camera. Uh, very often we are asked, oh, please uh, sell a black and white camera. Uh, I'm using this like a black and white camera. Mm -hmm. I select already custom image, black and white. So all pictures will be done with this setup of black and white. But maybe, maybe there is the opportunity to, to need the color picture yeah. later on. You don't know. I, I have a, a collection or my, my archive. There are, meanwhile, I don't know, 500,000 pictures. And uh, I have a 8 gigabyte uh, memory uh, and everything is saved on this. And it mm. makes, it costs no money. So all my pictures are done in DNG and I can use them afterwards if I need them. But uh, on the other hand side, I would like to have the impression of the black and white photography. And that is the reason I'm doing black and white photography right from the beginning and uh, save them as black and white pictures, as JPEGs. Mm -hmm. But for the later use, I have always could use the raw images. That is the reason yeah. I'm doing every time raw and JPEG simultaneous. Mm -hmm. and, I just uh, did a quick raw develop of the black and white picture so you can also do this in camera if you shot it in black and white you need a color version you can create yeah. it if it's raw aspect so, ratio yes 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 do you yes. want to spend time on that <laughs> yeah okay uh, okay because, why uh, is that 16 by 9 
<laughs> four yeah, by three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, as well. It's um, you can you had this opportunity on the GR2. Yeah, for for mm. Instagram, it used to be one yeah. by okay. one. We was very very often mm. asked, oh, why you are selling a twenty eight millimeter camera, or why there is missing sixteen to nine? Mm. If you have this three to two, you use the full frame. Everything of the frame is used, so there is nothing cut it mm. uh, up, down, or wherever you use the full frame, and all selections you can do later on. There is enough. Uh, you have uh, so many pixels. You can decide later on if you will uh, have it uh, sixteen to nine or four to three or whatever. Uh, so with this three to two, you have everything that is the old full frame size and that's enough all the other things could be done in the afterwards i think that's yeah. why i think so so but crop oh yeah that's crop that is uh, the same issue um I'm, i'm just saying with the 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter um the resolution is high enough to to crop the picture to Uh, 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter, but I never did it because I could do this afterwards if I prepared the pictures. Yeah. So I'm using the the, the widest uh, or the, the the biggest frame I could get and select it later on mm. on my computer. I have to say I use the 35 crop mode a lot lately because yeah. you get enough resolution and it helps just for visualizing the frame. You see yeah. differently in 35 and 50, and I have it set on my uh, movie button on the left. If I press it, I go through the crop modes, and then I can quickly see. Oh, this is how it would like uh, would look like shooting 35. But the downside is the, you don't get this um, the missing resolution back, uh, yeah. even if you shoot raw. So it's embedded in the raw file. So for for that reason, I think it's safe to shoot 28. 28 and then crop later. But yeah, if you need it, if you are 35 so, shooter. So this is the resolution finally. And uh, we can go already to the next step yeah. to, yeah, it, it, what I said, it makes no sense to, 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 to save uh, space on the memory But card. there is a good so, use case for choosing, okay. for example, the smallest. If you, yeah. if you do an interval shooting for time-lapse, Yeah. And you don't need the high resolution because your your the files are big, and if you shoot 2,000 photos, uh, your video resolution is 1080p. <laughs> then you don't need to shoot uh, 24 megapixel. Image control. Image control is a very very important thing. Uh, we have this as well as button function. Mm -hmm. uh, but I should explain. There are different uh, pre settings uh, for. The, the, the image control and mm -hmm. it's standard, it's vivid. We have black and white, we have soft black and white, we have hard black and white. Uh, hard black and white and uh, high black and white mm -hmm. is my favorite if I'm working with black and white. Uh, it's, it's You have the, the positive film, it's a slight, like a slide film and you have Sorry, different... my white balance is off. It's irritating. <laughs> ah, Sorry, okay. I will go back to auto so we can judge and the colors better. See the different... Uh, color selections yeah. so it's like a slide from black and white vivid standard it yeah. goes through all of them yeah each so. bypass and there are more settings um for each uh, uh image profile or color profile you can adjust them and uh, here you can create your specific style using this for weddings or for for party for event photography or anything like this yeah Okay, then next we have peripheral illuminated correction or illumination. Yes. Correct. <laughs> uh, it's, it's similar to when you activate yeah. the lens profile. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it would correct um, the light fall not off, indeed. maybe, but not. The, yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't. It wouldn't uh, correct the um, distortion, right? Yeah. Okay. And dynamic range correction. Yeah, I have it on auto. But yeah, you have it on auto. Yeah, I think this is. It's. It's finally it's part of the picture of, of the, the the final the final picture that you have 
highlight compensation or uh, shadow compensation. And we have to see it's only for JPEG. Uh, you can in, 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 in RAW, yeah. you have always the original. And you can always um, do that uh, when you edit your photos. Also, you can add the shadow correction here. Yeah. Yeah. If you want that. Noise, Noise reduction. reduction. Do you use it? <laughs> no, no, because I selected uh, uh, maximum, I'm doing 12,800 uh, mm -hmm. ISO. And uh, this is, it's not noiseless, but uh, I'm using this with black and white. And it makes a little, it's, it's nice to have a little bit noise on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't use this. And uh, I think that you lose some too much detail with noise reduction. It doesn't look yeah. very nice most of the time but you could like you see here individually yeah. um, set parameters for each iso value but i also have it turned off shake reduction is the one of the main different points to all other cameras in the market um, i selected in my ISO, auto iso uh, 115 seconds so i'm i could it's i could do this uh, without any tripod hmm. and uh, so this is always on yeah uh, and you shake your camera do it like this you will hear the the, the, the mechanic of the shake reduction. and it's hard to demonstrate uh, how it corrects your shakiness yeah. but once yeah. you use the gr2 for a while uh the gs3 for a while and go back to the gr2 you notice that it's a lot ah, shakier okay. yeah i've noticed that on the <laughs> gr1 recently auto shake reduction off uh yeah if you do it uh panning shots or, or from time to time i like the uh, the blur pictures uh do that like this uh, it's better to to switch it off mm -hmm. and have no auto shake reduction off yeah i wanted to add to the shake reduction thing but someone already asked um will turning off the shake, re uh, shake reduction increase battery life and um it will not affect the battery life very t little bit but not significantly uh, and i did a test because i was hoping it would help the battery life but the thing is the sensor needs to be held in place so even if yeah, you turn yeah. it off so, um it makes no sense. the the sensor is so, always it, being holded by um yeah it's always, always be, being yeah. holded in place and that also takes some um i, I think you get like 18 more photos or so yes for uh for 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 long exposure uh, it has a negative impact yes mm. for sure you should set, uh, set it or you should uh, turn it off, it off. Yeah. yeah for long exposure okay that's the end of um the image yeah, settings so that was the, the, i think that was the biggest part yeah. uh,